Warning, Rule 34 is a literal shit show. You should not watch this with family, friends, coworkers, strangers, or by yourself. We do not recommend or discourage any of the kinks or fetishes discussed here, but we're pretty sure that some are dangerous. Rule 34 is not FDA approved and should not be used to teach your children about sex. Viewer discretion is advised. Behold the power of Rule 34! No exception! Okay, I just want to go ahead and add that I'm really super horny today. Rule 34 of the internet. I'm not having bugs in my vagina, okay? Oh no! And I'll show you what's going to fit in that hole. It's in my pocket here. Oh, wow. Because I'm wild, yeah! Butt cheeks. Hi. Hi. Hi, Becky. Well, hello. How are you? Well, it's Sunday, and you know, I'm just like, I gotta work tomorrow. <laughs> well, yeah. I just had five days off, and I gotta try to figure out how I get the energy to go back to work tomorrow. Well, yeah. So I had Friday off, and then I had to work Saturday, and I had today off, and now I have to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then I'm off on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because Bob and I are going out of town for like a training thing for an organization that we're in. So yeah, nothing exciting. Well. Oh, Bob bought a new motorcycle. Oh, fancy. Yeah. Well, because, you know, you I guys bought... have sex. No, not yet. But <laughs> he is, he's about going to die because he can't even ride her right now because it's so cold here. If you guys don't already know, I'm in Wisconsin, like North Wisconsin. Super fucking cold. Yeah. So I bought a fat boy in August. That when I bought my bike? Yeah, I think so. And I told him, I said, I'm going to Sturgis next year. Either you buy a cruiser, a bike that you can actually take out there, or I'm going to go without you. <laughs> Wait, you're going to Sturgis, Michigan? No, Sturgis, South Dakota. Oh. Got my hopes up because I was going to be um, like, oh my I'm God, book a room, I'm coming. <laughs> no, oh, we're gonna ride, we're going to ride our bikes out there for the rally. So that's the plan. So anyway, he's been looking up all these different uh, cruiser type touring bikes since August, and every one of them, I said, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no, 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 no. And he showed me this one, and I handed his phone back to him in like a split second. I said, you're buying that bike. The next day, he got a hold of the guy, went and looked at it. He's like, oh. I love this bike. I'm like, she's coming home with you then. <laughs> well, we all suffered a tragedy recently. And if you thought that we weren't going to talk about it, you're fucking stupid. Uh, the amazing, legendary Betty White passed away this week before her 100th birthday. And it is a very sad thing. There's not a lot of celebrity passings out there that I personally feel for, but I think Betty White is one person that everybody felt for. And our show being what our show is all about, of course, we're going to talk about the greatest quotes of Betty White's that are all things raunchy and racy and hot. Um, everybody knows she was not a quiet little lady. <laughs> no, she actually, I think personally that she like is the embodiment of our show. Her whole philosophy about life was do what you want, fuck everybody else, be happy. Which open, I mean, honest, bluntness, just yeah, say I mean, it like it is a true fucking legend that she is. Absolutely. Um, like I said, she she just really embodies the show, so of course, we have to take some time out to honor her memory and go over some of the greatest quotes that are Betty White. <laughs> and like I said, of course, they're going to be perverted because we all know Betty White had her wild side. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're not going to so, talk about the sweet and innocent little side of Betty White. I don't no, know if I mean, there she, was she, one. 
She did amazing oh. things throughout her life. <laughs> she, she was a huge, huge activist for, for the gays, for, for the races, for animals. I mean, she did amazing I, things with her life, but we want to talk about the nitty gritty. Yes, Becky. Yeah, I just want to tell everybody that I'm laughing because Mike just did a huge ass jello shot out of a giant syringe. <laughs> Oh, is that what that was? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Oh, there he goes. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah. Huge. Huge. Yeah. Is that like four shots or what? <laughs> One? I don't think so. That had to be two. <laughs> I only two. That was actually part of Betty White's philosophy on how to live longer, was drinking lots of the bubbly. Uh -huh. oh. That's a fucking boy. Yeah, she's also known for eating like just what most people would consider unhealthy. Her favorite food was hot dogs. Uh, she was known for loving licorice. Every celebrity out there has said that <coughs> they're around without a bag of licorice in her purse or hand or pocket or whatever. She 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 liked to party, and we're gonna talk about it. <laughs> Um, I mean, she accepted a bunch of awards and, you know, whenever you accept an award as a famous person, you always give a speech. One of the, the funniest things that I think she said during a speech acceptance, award acceptance, whatever or another, um, she said, and I quote, my answer to anything under the sun, like what have you not done in business that you've always wanted to do? is Robert Redford. Um, so on stage in front of thousands and thousands of people, Betty White is talking about the one and only thing she wanted to do. And of course, it's going to be a man. <laughs> it was well known that she had like the hots for this Robert Redford guy. And I'm not going to lie. I have no idea who Robert Redford is off the top of my head. He was head. very handsome. He was very, very handsome. I will tell you. He was a he was like a legendary movie icon. He was like the Brad Pitt of his day. It was very fitting that Betty White would want to jump his bones. Yes. Um, very, she was very handsome, man. I mean, she was a model herself back in the day. I don't know if a lot of people know that, but that was part of the beginning of her career. She was a model. She was also a nude model. Well, of course, you know, which is ironic because there was also a quote of Betty White that said, don't you know, post pictures of your privates on Twitter, but <laughs> Betty White's out there modeling nude for the entire world to see, <laughs> which is, you know, fitting for Betty White. And that's why we love her. Um, <laughs> supported you all the way. Oh, yeah. Um, another, it's, it's like a real famous quote of Betty White's and it's something that I, I think it's like one of the first quotes I ever heard that was raunchy and wild of Betty White's that I was just like, you know what? I love this little old lady. My grandma now. <laughs> and it's, uh, why do people say grow some balls? Balls are weak and sensitive. If you want it to be tough, grow a vagina. Those things can take a heavy pounding. <laughs> yep. I... Like I said, I heard that quote and I heard it was from this little old lady, you know, who I'd seen in many, many movies and TV shows, the Golden Girls, all that. I've seen that quote and I was just like, I love her <laughs> because, I mean, yeah, that's an amazing quote in itself, but it came from a little old lady and that makes it more amazing. Again, just goes with her philosophy of be yourself and fuck everybody else's opinions. Yep. Um. One quote I found it's not it's not necessarily sexual, but I relate to it so hard. Uh, she said, "Just saw my first Christmas commercial of the season, and it really got me into the spirit of murdering people." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Betty White gives no fucks, <laughs> and we can all appreciate that. Uh, she did a lot of great things in her life. She, uh, like I said was a um, gay rights activist. And a quote 
from an interview she did in, uh, I don't know what magazine because I'm terrible at doing research, but she said, um, if a couple has been together for a long time, she doesn't understand, or she is an I, she doesn't understand why they shouldn't want to get married. She even added some sec homosexual relation. Okay, slow down here. She even added that some homosexual relationships actually last longer than the heterosexual ones and that it's irrational how some people can be against something, can become so against something. She said, take care to mind your own affairs, mind your own business, and keep your hands out of people's other people's worries. Which, again, the epitome of our show just plassed up a little bit because that is what Betty White does. Um, ladies, Betty White encourage you, <laughs> encourages you on a show that she did hot in Cleveland that if a guy is a cutie, you've got to get the booty. <laughs> so keep that in mind. My, my cat is masturbating on my lap right now. Betty White would approve. <laughs> God. Yeah. Oh, he's just getting right in there. <laughs> it's a blanket, okay? He's not in a blanket. He just is very much in love with this blanket. Um, We talked about how she was a, a model, a new model. There is a um open action. Open action. <laughs> there was a super bowl moment um where that head. led to a, a cover of a magazine picked by betty white where she was wearing a metal bikini and waving a ch flaming chainsaw riding a centaur <laughs> at with john riddick Ritter, ritter's head because, you know, why not? That's something why Betty White I, I don't, I, I, I mean, Betty White does what she wants. And that's why we love her. <laughs> um, Betty White was up there in age. But somebody did actually ask her during an interview if one could ever be too old for sexual desires. Becky, can you guess what Betty White said back to that question? I'll stop having sex when I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty close. She said, you want to know if desire melts away with age? Well, I'm waiting for that day to come. Sexual desire is like aging. There's a lot of it up here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Betty White does not quit. <laughs> I'm learning all the time. I'm going to be Betty White when I'm 90 years old. I'm telling you. I could see that. I could see that and, and she would appreciate the hell out of it. Um, she was married a couple times. Um, I don't know how many people actually know that. She was not, you know, married once and done. She was married actually about three times, I believe it is. And she was quoted on why she married her first husband. Got any idea on that one? All these quotes that we've talked about so far. Tell me, because he had a big dick. <laughs> good in bed. I'm going to say good in bed. Basically, she said, I married my first husband because we wanted to sleep together. It lasted six months and we were in bed for six months. <laughs> and then they found out they had nothing else in common. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Pretty much. Be Betty White just wanted to get some. Well, yeah, way back in that, those days, you know, you didn't have sex before marriage. No, she, she, uh, was, I mean, she, she went through a lot of stuff. I mean, she's been alive for a while. She's seen it all. And, you know, that's one of the things where women and men were kept kind of separate and not held at an equal standard. Yep. Yeah. That's what women had to do back in the day to get some was marry somebody. <laughs> yeah. Cause like Catherine Hepburn. 
she was kind of on the same level. She was very outspoken. She was, um, she was, she was very much the same, but not as raunchy. She wasn't a comedian. She was more serious. But if anybody ever watches a single one of Katherine Hepburn's movies, she never wore a dress or a skirt in her entire life. She wears big fluffy pants in all of the movies that she was ever in. Absolutely refused to wear a dress because it, it it was demeaning to women. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Betty White apparently had a relationship with Houdini. Did you know that? I did not know that. Tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> she said, I not only knew but we had a very lovely relationship. I really thought we had something going and then the son of a gun disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> she said that back in 2014. You know, uh, with a interview did with a guy named Craig Ferguson. Oh, I love Craig Ferguson. Yeah, he interviewed her and that's all she had to say about it. <laughs> um roast on William Shatner a few years ago as well. She one of the many celebrities who roasted William Shatner. <coughs> one of her most famous jokes from that quote. Top tier. It's golden. She said, we all know Shatner's nuts, but George Takai has actually tasted them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She, probably was like one of the funniest people on that roast i firmly believe that she also oh, yeah don't do it she also i mean she talked a lot about celebrity counters that she may have had or things have happened or things like that her claim to fame according to her was that she was actually the only woman to never sleep with tiger woods <laughs> <laughs> I never slept with Tiger Woods. <laughs> Which implies that Tiger Woods had come on to Betty at one point or another in her career. Oh my God. Which is amazing in itself. But, you know, I'm just, that's just great. And her spirit, when she turned 90, she was quoted saying, I'm still horny as I've ever been. <laughs> Which is something that I felt like you could really get behind and appreciate. Always, 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 always. Ladies, Betty White also has some breakup advice for you. She said the best way to get over a breakup is to get under an. She said the best way to get over a man is to get under another one. I'll agree with that. Yep. I I do. Too. <laughs> she was a uh, Betty White was a freak. She was quoted once in an article that sex without pain is like food without taste, and that just opens a whole door of questions. That man, I don't know if we have got time for all that. <laughs> <laughs> One thing uh, Betty White was also known for that a lot of people don't really get is that she was very confident in herself. Um, she said when she was turning 91, now that I'm 91 as opposed to 90, I'm much wiser. I'm much more aware that, much more aware and I'm much sexier. <laughs> she, was, she was very confident in herself and all women need that. Betty White energy in their lives. Oh yeah. Um, Self confidence is very sexy to men. Don't be that shy little mouse of a girl. Fucking be yourself. Get out there. You know, like really shine. Really shine. Men find that sexy. Oh yeah. Be yeah. Betty White I believed it. Um, he was in. Star a lot on SNL, which a lot of people, you know, 
that's where they love they learned to love Betty White and found out how raunchy she really is. Actually, she was. I don't think she was on the show until she was in her nineties already. They never had her on that before, was she? Oh. I remember seeing her first episode. I I'm not a hundred percent sure. I know I know there was a lot. She, there was a lot of the skits that she did where she was older, so I would imagine that it wasn't until she got older. But, I mean, the one skit that really popped out while I was doing all this little research here was a skit called Caesar Taker versus Old Lady. So, yeah, she was older when she did this skit, I imagine. Um, and the quote she said that, you know, just kind of killed the skit and made it hilarious was, do I need a calculator? I have one, but I took the batteries out to use a crotch massager. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, you can't be, you can't say something like that and not feel it a little bit. So, I mean. Well, I wish I was feeling my crotch massager right now. <laughs> That one doesn't take batteries. I've upgraded. Yeah, she actually was talking about um, her experiences on SNL. Um, and Facebook fans start had started a petition. And I don't remember what the petition was about. But one of the quotes that Betty White had in response to the petition was, Did you ever make a change in a minute and 10 seconds? People are tearing your clothes off and... Well, I mean, I've done that before too, but <laughs> yeah, she really did enjoy her time there on SNL and she made that very, very queer, like clear. Um, <laughs> I signed the petition to get her on SNL. Maybe that's what she it was. She had never been on it. She had never been on, an, on SNL. They had never invited her on the show and she was already in her nineties or she just turned 90 or something. And like people were floored that she had never been on the show because she is such a hilarious figure, you know? Right. Yeah, she uh she did a lot with her life. She uh did have a relationship with Ryan Reynolds. Um, I don't think it was sexual, but <laughs> she, have been. <laughs> she and Ryan were pretty close. They gave each other a lot of shit, but she did have a tweet that she posted about Ryan Reynolds movie Deadpool when it came out she said I love at Van, Van City Ryan or sorry Van City Reynolds here are a few of my thoughts about his new movie Deadpool it was glorious once in a generation does a movie come out comes along that your whole family will love that is if your family is a bleeped up group of bleep kissing inbreds plus <laughs> Ryan looks so sleeping handsome in his leather suit. I give it four golden girls. Best picture of the year. <laughs> so go see Deadpool this Friday. Uh, Ryan Reynolds had retweeted that one too a couple times. Um, there was a bunch of posts on her Twitter about Ryan Reynolds and his Deadpool movies. And everybody knows that they really, they had a good back and forth repertoire of giving each other shit and that's amazing i think the reason they got along so great was because ryan didn't see her as this little old fragile lady she knew he knew she was a tough old broad and he appreciated that so the last we don't want this to get too sad we want to honor betty the right way but we don't want to get all sappy because it was sad losing her this year last year technically because hey new year but one quote that uh we used to wrap this up from betty white was about social media. she said if you take this social media thing seriously i assume you weren't hugged enough as a child and you probably don't get enough sex as an adult and that right there ladies and gentlemen is why we come here and say the things that we say and do what we want because we have that same mindset that Betty White has. Yes. And, and more people should. I it's actually crazy. have used that quote already once in response to something that somebody had said to me. 
I have a Tinder account and on my Tinder profile in my bio, I made this joke probably three months ago when somebody had asked me why I'm still single. I said, I've got the knees of Betty White and the ass of Hank Hill. And that's not in very high demand, but at least I'm funny. Somebody told me just recently after Betty White's passing, oh, well, I'm not offended, but some people might be offended by that joke. Betty White would not be offended by that joke. No. <laughs> so I, I, I responded with that, that quote from Betty White about taking social media too seriously and uh, another couple quotes about being yourself and fuck everybody else and yada 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 that person is no longer matched with me on tinder let's just say that but hey oh. hey betty white would be proud she is up there toasting her vodka and twizzler straws to me right now <laughs> and i am proud to believe that because what's more betty white than vodka and twizzlers <laughs> not much <laughs> Yeah, she did a lot of great things, but of course we wanted to take the time to honor her and, you know, show that we love her and we will miss her dearly because not a lot of celebrities out there you're going to miss when they go. Jeez. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, on the bright side, I mean, she, at least she was, you know, such an incredible person. And we have so many documents, like TV shows and movies and, you know, things. Just we have her memory carved in stone. Yep. She will Betty always White. be with us. Betty White is like Robin Williams in the sense that no matter how long it's been since they are gone, they will be remembered like they are still here. Um, not many celebrities get to that point, but Betty White was a legend. A sex icon in my book <laughs> she was everybody's grandma and she know. was just straight up an icon i mean yeah just completely yeah. impeccable yeah she did a lot of things that i mean they're they're just too great to forget so for any of you out there you know <laughs> betty white supporters our hearts go out to you, you no know, sad to see her go but let's do the traditional things that Betty White would want in her absence, which is party, have fun, and fuck everybody's feelings. And let's do our memory right. Yes. Yeah. To Betty. To Cheers. Betty. Yeah. Cheers. I don't have a beer, but yeah. Cheers, Betty. <laughs> Whatever you got, people, pick them up. Toast to Betty. <laughs> yep. Do it. Do it. So, I mean, that's that's the only like planned part of our show we had, you know, because we have to plan something for Betty White. We can't just leave that hanging. But as far as the rest of the show goes, we're gonna handle it in true Betty White style and say, fuck it and wing it. <laughs> and we do our thing doing that. So, you know, yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> I hate when he uses that sound effect. Mike, do you really have a question or are you just using that sound yeah. effect? Yeah. Tell us what's your question. You got a question? Got a question? Got a question? <laughs> Ask. <laughs> um, no, because yeah. then we'll I get yelled at when I get naked because apparently oh. that gets us banned. Well, in general, yes, I would get naked. But not on camera, Becky will get sorry. Banned. Oh my God. <laughs> I felt pressured. <laughs> so Let's do, let's do I'm some fuck, Mary kill, Becky. What? Let's do fuck, Mary kill. I know how much you love that. And yes. I feel like it is also very fitting to go hand in hand with the Betty White conversation. Cause I feel like Betty White loved this game. So celebrities, let's see. Ryan Reynolds, Betty White. Um, Can't remember any other celebrities. George Clooney and Ryan Gosling. Fuck Mary Kill. Oh. 
Okay. I have to marry Ryan Reynolds because a lifetime of laughter is worth everything. Everything. Yeah. yeah. So I'm definitely marrying Ryan Ryan Reynolds. Um I would have to say George Clooney is got to be an extremely passionate lover. So I am fucking him. <laughs> so I guess Ryan Gosling is just oh. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I I agree with marrying Ryan Reynolds. I would in a fucking heartbeat. Like, you can come roast me, boo. I got you. <laughs> Love that body. Oh my god. <laughs> You're married, you get to have sex with that too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um I know it means like five, six times a day. I'm just saying. That's normally <laughs> how much I like to have sex. Anyway, so you know. Um, it's just given. Keep it going. I would, I would actually, I would probably kill George Clooney because, yes, he might be a very passionate lover, but all I could think about is where he learned this from, though. How many other women have felt this? Who else he out there fucking? This is probably a dirty, dirty dick right here. <laughs> Not in the good sense. Well, yeah, but I mean. <laughs> I'm sure they're all out there just fucking and fucking and fucking. I know, but George Clooney is a, he's a fucking sex symbol to most women. So, like, well, all three of them are. Well, yeah, but I don't. Ryan Gosling's not really. I mean, I don't feel as compared to Ryan Reynolds and fucking George Clooney. I don't. You don't hear like. He's not as famous as them. I mean, he's famous. He's fucking a list, but he's not as famous as George Clooney or Ryan Reynolds. But he was in the Notebook. Yeah, I know. But I, I don't. I would. I would fuck Ryan. I would have to. It'd be like a collection thing, you know. I got to collect all the Ryans. Frank Gosling. Yeah. Frank Gosling. Okay, you're collecting Ryans, and you're gonna fuck the, the kill kill the Clooney. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. You give me one. You come up with one. Mike, how come you're not chiming in? No. Come on, pick a Ryan. Pick any Ryan you want, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you do. <laughs> um, all right. We'll, we're gonna let Mike skip this one. Um chocolate. Okay, they have to be people that you know. Obviously, you don't know Robert Redford. I, I mean, I might if I saw his picture or knew where he was from, but I mean, for the most part, I don't really get into celebrities' lives like that. Like, okay. I'll be like, that one actor from that one movie, you know, unless I can hardcore relate to them, like Ryan Reynolds or Betty White or Robin yeah. Williams, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, Robert Redford, I I've heard the name, I know the name, I'm aware of the name. Oh, I guarantee not... you, you look him up, you're gonna be like, oh, that guy. Yeah, probably, but I can't. She can't look it up right now because then her video will shut off. Yeah. Just so everybody knows. Yeah. Okay, my three are. Um. Will Smith. Okay. Tupac. Oh, you're a bitch for that one. <laughs> I know. And Lawrence Fishburne. Who? You don't know who Lawrence Fishburne is? He is, he, okay. Um, The Matrix. Okay. He, he's like the main dude morpheus yes okay 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 yeah see see i knew who he was once you told yeah. me a movie okay 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 um i'm killing off lauren right away uh I have, oh I, my I've, god he's hot i have no interest plus his voice kind of annoys me I, oh I, my I, god i love his voice during like sex or a lifetime i i couldn't do it um I'm marrying Tupac. He was a fucking poet. He was a genius. Okay. And he had that body though. Mm. And I would I would fuck, I guess. 
just for the experience. I feel like he's a gentle, tender lover, which isn't necessarily my thing. But you would love it. But I mean, you it'd would be, melt it'd all be over him. Change. It'd be a change because, like I said, I mean, I I've had gentle, but I'm more into the rough stuff. So it would be definitely a change up to go back to the gentle loving for one night. <laughs> All right. What about you? How you doing? I actually what? absolutely hate to say it because I, I love Lawrence Fishburne so much. Like he to me would be like just one of these really rational, down to earth people that you would want to marry. Like total common sense all the time. Like talking things out not arguing like a really good home life kind of person so, but you know they're so boring i i would feel horrible about killing him so fuck him no <laughs> mm. no i'm gonna marry him i'm gonna marry him okay i'm gonna i was gonna kill him but i'm like no i can't i gotta marry him <laughs> um and it's, oh, this is the worst game ever with these three. I seriously didn't think about it enough. You, I'm like, yeah, I, you came up I with don't this like. One. I know, I know. Up with this one. Oh, shit. Um, okay. Don't you kill off Pac again. Don't do him dirty like that. No. <laughs> That's all I got to say. I gotta fuck Tupac. I got to. He is just... Oh my God, his his sing, music. Can sing, you imagine? Sing to me in my Happy ear while you make it sweet love to me. How do you feel? <laughs> and I'm so sorry to Will Smith because I really don't want to kill you at this point, <laughs> ever. <laughs> but you gotta go because I already made my choices. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So, Tiger Woods, Jennifer Aniston. And Seth Rogen. <laughs> I'm killing Tiger Woods right off the get go. I don't even think I need to explain that. Yeah, he's not my favorite person. He's kind of a DB, and I'm not fond of people who are DBs. I have to. I. Oh my God. Oh. Oh my God, what do I have to do here? Oh. <laughs> I'm fucking Jennifer Aniston. Although I would love to marry her. I'm like, she's not that funny. And, and Seth Rogen is. And you know, guys, you guys know how much I am about the laughter for life. So yeah, I gotta marry Seth Rogen. But as long as I get to have keep on having sex with Jennifer Aniston, I'm happy. <laughs> I don't think that he would object to that either. I do not see him being like, I agree. No, I agree. have sex with Jennifer Aniston. How dare you? You're my wife. Um, I just think that he would hope that you would allow him to watch. <laughs> well, I, I kind of was like, should I marry Jennifer Aniston just because she's so, now, I don't know. I see, I see that she and I have a lot in common. Like personality wise, I could see us just like totally enjoying the rest of our lives together. See, I I agree with your choices a hundred percent. But the, here's the reason why I wouldn't want to marry marry Jennifer Aniston. Not because I don't think that she's that funny, because I think that she is hilarious. I think that she has like just she keeps her humor toned down in the public eye, but I bet in a relationship she's hilarious. I think probably one of those people playing pranks on you all the time and shit see I, and that that's the way that i am that's i that's what i see i think she has that subtle humor that people don't get to see a lot in her movies because she takes on more serious roles however the only reason that i don't think that i could see myself marrying jennifer aniston and it's weird but it, her voice and when she cries like when she cries in movies i hate the way she cries it's just, it sounds like knives being stabbed in my ear on glass or something. And I, I just had a flashback of, uh, what was it? 
Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman. Oh God, she got yeah. the most horrible, ugly cry. I'm sorry, Julia Roberts. I think you're a very beautiful lady, but I can't it's watch you even, cry. I don't even that she. I don't even think it's an ugly cry. When Jennifer Aniston cries, she's still a beautiful fucking woman. But it's just the sounds she makes when she cries and her the combination of her voice. It's like a knife on glass, and I I can't can't do it i'm so sorry if she ever sees this i still love you jennifer aniston i still idolize you but <laughs> and we're not afraid of tiger woods at all <laughs> no gotta... yeah no tiger's done not being a dick that's all we gotta say <laughs> yeah no tiger woods is an asshole try all some right. human decency sir let's sure. do let's do one more round each you come up with one more set and i'll come up with one more set and we'll move on Oh my God, that was like the most kick-ass I've ever done in this game. I can't compete with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, for Pete's sakes. Um, fuck, now I forgot her name. I'm having a total brain fart. Um, What's she in? She's married to Brad Pitt. Angelina, Angelina Jolie. Okay, I was gonna say Angelina Jolie. I mean, I think yep. they're technically divorced now, but yeah, yeah, they are. But still, um, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Mm -hmm. And Vin Diesel. Um. Off the bat, I'm killing Angelina Jolie. Um, one, she's had too many surgeries to change how she actually looks. Two, okay, she did have breast cancer and a double lump lumpectomy. Yeah, so she actually had her boobies cut off. Yeah, I I get that, but I'm sorry, you're not getting a sympathy vote here, Angelina. I hear that. I mean that the. the divorce and separation with her and brad like she her her nasty side came out bad oh and, she's a psycho bitch everybody knows that yeah and i i just don't need that in my life so i'm sorry no. but you're gonna go honey goodbye <laughs> um i'd probably fuck ben diesel because um hello that body um but i would marry Dwayne because he's hilarious he's also been <laughs> he's also been known to be like humble too. really humble so I, I would i would marry him in heartbeat what about you mike do you have an actual question god damn it yeah shut the fuck door okay so i am definitely marrying the rock because he is hilarious and he's down to earth he is a total mama's and a grandma's boy. He is 100% about family. He is, I've seen the videos with him, with his kids. And I'm like, he's just an all around, really fucking great guy. Just fucking amazing. I absolutely love him. I would totally spend the rest of my life with him. Just to like have that kind of environment in my life. Yeah. Um. I'm sorry, Vin Diesel. I have to fuck Angelina Jolie because she is so hot. Okay. And I'm telling you, she stole Brad Pitt from Jennifer Aniston. How good are you in bed to get to that point? <laughs> I'm just saying. Psycho I mean, or not, I only have to fuck her, right? I don't got to live with the bitch. They do, say, they do say that psycho women are the best in bed. So yeah. I, I understand that. And Vin Diesel, as much as I do love you and your hot ass body and your love of pit bulls, because I love pit bulls too. No, I can't do it. I'm sorry. All right. All right. Here we go. Last one. Jennifer Lawrence. She's she the one from the Hunger Games? Yep. Okay. Halo. Kevin Hart. <laughs> you're a bitch i know i know <laughs> um 
I seriously want to see JLo's ass all over me. <laughs> I'm fucking her. <laughs> now the other two. I Kevin Hart is hilarious. And I I would love to laugh my ass off for the rest of my life, but he's such a tiny little man. <laughs> And I am not a tiny little woman. <laughs> and I have a serious problem with that. Oh, God. I don't think you understand how serious I am about not dating people short. First of all, I hear that short men, they're women, tall or not, like fucking queens. So. Oh, my husband. Well, my husband and I have been together for 13 years. And it was a fairy tale relationship the whole time he is the most amazing guy in the whole world and in shorter than me but kevin hart is a lot shorter than me <laughs> a lot <laughs> he's like what five three or five i don't even fucking know but i'm five eight that's a big difference and if I'm i can't five, dance three. but if i can't dance with a man and be like i want to put my head on your chest baby <laughs> Oh God, poor Kevin Hart. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I gotta, so, I gotta marry Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, I would, I would fuck Kevin Hart. I, I'm one of those women whose size doesn't matter. I don't care how tall you are. I don't care how big your dick is, as long as you know how to use it. Everybody's All the same that. height when you're laying down. Exactly. <laughs> um, and I, I am actually the same height as Kevin Hart, so he's not that much. He's not shorter than me. So there's that. Um, <laughs> in my eyes, Kevin, you're tall, man. You're tall. <laughs> um, so I would, I would fuck Kevin Hart in a heartbeat because I think that that would be the most hilarious, fun sexual experience of my life. I feel like because of the height complex that he might or might not actually have i feel like he would make up for it in any way possible if he does feel that way um <laughs> i'm down for that all the way um i'm sorry i do have to interject for a second because i'm recalling this video that the rock posted you know how they like fuck with each other all the time yeah the rock posted a video of him holding a baby and it was kevin hart <laughs> yeah yeah Yep. Now, I fucking love their relationship. It's so great. Yeah, their bromance <laughs> is real and it's adorable. I love it. Oh yeah. Um, they're both obviously very secure in their masculinity though. So oh, yeah. I don't think Kevin Hart really does have a height inferiority complex. No. But I feel no. like he would still make a joke about it by trying to make up for the lack of having one, you know what I mean? Yep. So I would I would definitely fuck Kevin Hart in a heartbeat. No, no doubts about it. Um, now, Jennifer Lawrence and J-Lo. This is where it gets tough. Um, but I would marry Jennifer Lawrence because she is very secure about her body. I mean, there's been times when she's been given shit and she's not even a big girl. But being a celebrity, you have to be paper stick thin and this, that, and the other. You have to be it's perfect. Long. Yeah, no. Um, I think she's gorgeous. Yeah, she's, she is. She's hands down gorgeous, but she handles it so gracefully when anybody does comment about her weight. And by gracefully, I mean, she downright tells them to fuck off, which I admire the ever loving shit out of her for that. Strong, um, independent woman. Yeah, she's very, very strong, independent woman. And I, uh, she's beautiful and hilarious. Um, she does kind of have the same voice thing with Jennifer Aniston, but Hers is a little bit more raspy as opposed mm. to like a piercing sharpness. Yep, yep. Yep. And I do like the raspy voice of women like Jennifer Tilly. Oh my God. She can do whatever she wants to me. And most people hate her voice, but her voice gets me wet. Oh God. Jennifer Tilly. Oh, I love you. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm marrying Jennifer Lawrence and I'm sorry, JLo. You are also a very strong, independent woman. But I feel like the Brooklyn in you is going to be very high maintenance, and I cannot deal with that. I can't deal with it. I'm very low maintenance, so I'm sorry, J-Lo. you got to go. Sorry. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought he was rolling a joint. <laughs> I don't know what the hell he's doing. <laughs> Sorry, we're watching Mike. He's just like roaming around in the kitchen. We oh, get me a beer while you're in there. <laughs> 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 he hates us sometimes i, I know I'm like i'm supposed to be behind the scenes god damn it and you just keep pulling me in <laughs> we're calling you out <laughs> he's got his big old jug of blue something in there is there vodka in there i can't hear you just say yes or no is there vodka in there no Blame. better be something in there are you drinking <laughs> alcohol <laughs> you wish. <laughs> I want to hear the Wayne Brady. Um, what is it? Slap a hole, punch a hole, something like that. Did you ever see that when he was on the Dave Chappelle show? No, that not that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know that I have. I. I used to be big into the Dave Chappelle show, but then. I don't know, like. I'm all for celebrities using their fame to like try to better the world through politics and things like that. Like I, I love that shit. But when when Dave Chappelle shifted from like comedy based stuff into that like direction with trying to like correct the political things that are wrong mm -hmm. with the world and stuff, his personality changed and not like in a good way. He became he he took on that like that. I'm a nice guy persona, you know what I mean? Where they say they're a nice guy, but really they're not really a nice guy. They're just trying to be controlling. Yeah. And he's not necessarily like that, really not, but that's like the vibe he started to give off. And I mean, I know, like, like I said, I know he means well and he's trying to do like the right thing, but I think that, that you can do that without having that vibe and the fact that he gives off that vibe hints that maybe deep down somewhere in his being he might have those tendencies to be a controlling asshole i don't know, i don't know. i stopped liking dave Chappelle when he tried to start doing the right thing which is fucked up but like i said he just he does it so awkwardly that i'm just like mm. see and i i don't really follow any of it but you know just okay the end of the serious note though for sure like way too many people have gotten way too serious and you stopped having fun and you started fighting with everybody that you actually used to care about and love because you have a difference of opinion. Get over yourself. You're everybody's right and everybody's wrong. See, and that's what I think it is. I think he did that where he wanted to do the right thing so much that he became an asshole to everybody. And it's just like, okay, you were the guy in the skits talking about peanut butter and crack sandwich bro like you need to calm down with that anger like mm, please yeah there's so, way too much anger in the world y'all need to get laid and start laughing more seriously and, like he started doing it in his his comedy shows on you know comedy central and stuff and you you saw the progression and as the moment he even started hinting at that stuff that's when i got the vibe and i was like we're gonna stop watching this i know you're right now you're like 99.9 .9 peanut butter and crack sandwich but that one percent is enough to make me want to turn off this whole damn show so i stopped following anything dave Chappelle related a long time ago so if that skit with wayne brady happened before oh yeah years ago the, long, long, long time before his change then i might have seen it but if it happened after his the, even the hair transition into it i didn't see it i do like however wayne brady in whose line is it anyway he is hilarious no matter what that well yeah but that show is a show they need to bring back like for real for real that show was well no they're touring now they're gonna have a freaking show up here by me really i didn't know they, they were still going yeah. Well, he's not in it, but Ryan Stiles is, and I'm, I don't know. I'm never going to buy tickets. You know, if somebody bought me tickets, I would definitely go, but I love that show so much. Like, I'll, I will sit and watch the reruns forever. Okay. Okay. 
the but tall, Wayne Brady is one of my favorites. Who? What's that tall guy's name that's on there? Ryan the Styles. Ryan Styles. The balding guy. That's his name. Yeah. Okay. Ryan Styles. Fuck Mary Kill. Drew Carey. Ryan Styles or Wayne Brady. Oh. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about fucked up. <laughs> I'm marrying Ryan Styles. Really? I love Ryan Styles. You have no idea how much I love Ryan Styles. He, I will watch that show anytime he is on. But if, if like I don't know anybody on the show, or if they're just like regulars that aren't on very often. Okay, so Wayne Brady. I will always watch. Drew Carey, I will always watch. Who's that? Oh my God, I can't remember his name. He's, who's he's, the guy who? Who's he's the, the short and bald guy. Who's the guy who hosted it before Drew Carey? I don't remember his name either. Because I think he was my favorite host for that show. I, oh Drew yeah, mine too. does do a great job. Yeah, but that other guy, I felt like he got more to it, and Drew oh, yeah. was doing it like oh, yeah. because he has to. Oh yeah, and I also I don't know I kind of get like an asshole vibe from Drew Carey. Like I feel like he's an asshole. Like he's full of himself. Am I wrong to think that? Well, no, he, no, well, that's an Ohio thing. It really is. I mean, you know people from Ohio. I know people from Ohio. It is an Ohio thing. I know, but it, I just, uh, I don't, I think the show really went downhill when Drew Carey took over and well, no, ever since that guy left, cause everybody was like, well, you're not as good as it's like the price is right. Bob Barker. I right. Can. Now Drew right. Carey is hosting that. Everybody loves Drew Carey, but you're not Bob Barker. You don't belong there. Right. And maybe, I mean, maybe that's part of like his persona that comes on. Like he, Got that in, got an inferiority complex. Maybe he's he's pissed off that he's trying to compete with these. Maybe people. you're pissed off that he's him and not the other guy. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I I don't think that I would feel that way if he didn't seem like such. If he would just chill out and relax and enjoy himself, I might not feel that way. But he's I so. Think, he's I think so because up. it is semi scripted and not one hundred percent improv on the host end of it, and I think that he was just awkward with it he was never fully comfortable with it he would rather be a contestant well yeah and that's what drives me crazy is he's so uptight it it kind of kills the vibe of the whole show because the whole show is about improv and being funny and having a good time and he's he just seems out of place like nervous like i really don't want to be here right now yeah yeah and it's just like I and i can to get the him. same feeling about him on P price is right when i do watch that it just seemed way too forced. Like, I really just want to go for a ride out in the country in my convertible and <laughs> hang out with my friends and drink some beers. And yeah. just, I don't want to be here. Like, it always seems like I don't want to be here. And yeah. I can't blame him because I am I am super the same kind of person. But that's, that's him in, like, his entire career. There was the one show that he did in, like, the, the 80s or the 90s. I can't remember which... I remember watching it as a kid on late night TV. Um, the Drew Carey show. Maybe is that the one he's like? He works in like an office or something, and there's that like loud lady in there. Mimi. Yeah. And Craig Ferguson was their boss. Oh, is that who Craig Ferguson is? Yes. Okay. See, I <laughs> do know these. I just can't put the name in the face. I'm terrible. At but yeah, like I don't know so uptight and everything he does except for that show that's the show that it, the only show and even then it like hinted through a little bit where he felt like a i feel like drew carey just really needs a good dick sucking somebody just needs to like really suck his dick good to relax I, I think that he needs to get back to personal private life and out of show business because some people are made for the spotlight and some people are made for privacy and doing your own thing and i'm like that i would never be able to handle like celebrity status, I would start murdering people. Like, get out of my face. I just want to be my own person. Leave me alone, please. And, you know, 
and there are a lot of celebrities out there that the paparazzi actually respect them as human beings because of that. Like uh, Demi Moore and Bruce Willis, the, the, the paparazzi are not in their face. I mean, this woman brings her kids to school every day. She's on the PTA. She goes to the grocery store in their little tiny town. She is a part of the community. You know, I mean, so yeah, like I can totally understand like that mentality, like point of view. Oh my God, we totally got serious. <laughs> anyway. I know. <laughs> okay. Well, so, so I'm definitely marrying Ryan Styles because he's fucking hilarious. And I actually do find him extremely sexy, scrawny body or not. I mean, you got, y'all met Bob. He's a scrawny <laughs> fucker. But yeah. So see, it's, it's not the scrawny thing that throws me off about him. It's his nose and his bald spot. Like, just... oh, no, my my husband is totally bald. Totally I'm, bald. I'm I love not, bald dudes. I'm not big into bald dudes. I'm really not. But I have more hair than any guy I think I've ever dated. <laughs> uh, but I, I'm not really big into bald dudes. I, I, I would, no. I no, mean, okay. <laughs> and honestly the halfway point where he's at it's make a choice man either shave it or get it hair transplant he, he wouldn't look good bald he doesn't have the right shaped head for it no he doesn't which is why i suggest like a he would look like a big old pencil <laughs> don't don't be in between there man like it just it hurts me more than a bald guy does i don't know why Matt, you're good <laughs> but i would i i you would marry him i would i would only fuck him oh yeah yeah i i would fuck it because i mean no i'm you, fucking me grady I you know would, why because i can probably get some kind of orgy or deal going on because he is like he's open he's open for yeah he's open for adventure <laughs> he's got enough personality in him that him alone in the bedroom would be like an orgy <laughs> i know oh my god but and i've just always found him super fucking hot and i would i would definitely fuck him yeah i would marry him because he's hilarious and again the personality thing and the he's hot and i would marry him i would fuck the other dude because i really don't want to fuck or marry drew carey so i would have to kill drew carey off like i it's, i'm sorry drew but you are the odd man out in this scenario which is why I, I do love you. So angry because he knows this, but like, yeah, this is. I mean, I, I, I'm not gonna lie, it never dawned on me till this moment. But I really think I have a hatred for Drew Carey that I never knew I had before. Like, I knew I didn't like him, but I you like have, him. you have a disagreement of personalities. How about that? Yeah, because I always say that when I meet somebody and I just like instantly don't like them, I'm like. I'll tell them flat out. I am sure that you are a very wonderful person and that you're very loving and kind to people, you know, and but we don't have compatible personalities and I don't want to hang out with you. You wouldn't believe how many people actually respect me for saying that. <laughs> See, and you and you do handle it a lot better because I, I take on more of like a different persona. If I don't like somebody, I'm like, look. I don't know what it is. There's you just think they rub you the wrong way. Yeah, there's something telling me I don't like you. And so mm -hmm. you just go ahead and stay away from me. Like I if I don't like somebody, I don't give them the respect of telling them, look, I, I'm sure you're a nice person. Or, no, I don't like you, which means you're probably not a good person. If I don't like you, then there's something deep in my I'm very intuitive. Like oh, yeah. so like if yeah, I don't too. like you, it's not you're not a good person. Like but it's but it's not on me to judge somebody just well, because you rub me the wrong way you know what i mean i don't want to be overly judgmental towards anybody it could just be that we don't have compatible personalities right and i i I've, i'll admit that to the people that i do like or that i do know like if it's me so and so and this person that i don't like and this person that i i don't like is friends with the so and so that i know i'll be like look I'm sure they're great to you, 
but you also need to watch your back because I believe they're a snake and I don't trust them and I think they're a bad person. Like, yeah, but, it's usually the outcome. <laughs> yeah, if the other person asks me, what's up? Like, are we friends yet? I'm gonna be like, no, I, I don't like yeah. you. You I know, like I think you're a bad person. Please my just butt. go away from me now. Yeah. I don't want to be in your presence. You, yeah, I find you disturbing to be around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as fucked up as it is, I've done that with like family. Like my my younger sister, I do not get along with her, and everybody in my family, oh, it's family. That's your sister. You should love her. No, no. she is a bad person. I will. I will bite my tongue when we're at family functions i won't say anything uh, but i get home and i'm talking to my cousin about yeah she a bitch dude i fucking hate <laughs> her dude she comes up to me when we're not at a family function and tries to talk to me i'm gonna be like i hate you go away now you're gross <laughs> like i've flat out done that like with my sister i've flat out told her i'm like mm, i hate you and she's like hmm I hate you too. And I'm like, great, grand. We're on the same page. Now fuck off kindly. <laughs> like, I don't, like I said, if it comes to that person themselves, I don't respect them enough to try to like, I will just flat out, I'll, I don't like, you're a terrible person. But if yeah. it's somebody else who knows them and wants to give them a chance or wants to be friends, with, okay, go ahead, go ahead. You go ahead. But let me tell you, I am very intuitive and I think that person is a bad person and a snake. So, and then usually I get like, I get the message, oh my God, you were right. And it can take anywhere from a couple days to a couple months, but I always, always get that message about somebody that, oh my God, you were right, they're a bad person. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, you know, it's really funny. I used to work with this one girl and I remember her when she first started going out with this guy, like they knew each other from high school and everything. And she started going out with him. And I told her flat out, I don't like him. That guy's a dick. Like he's right. a, not a good person in his heart. He's a bad person. And it was like three, four years later, she announced that she was getting married to him. And I looked her flat in the, like square in the face. And I'm like, I highly disapprove. I am not happy for you at all. This is going to be bad. And right. she was mad at me and I said, I congratulate you on your current happiness, but I am not supportive of this marriage at all. Right. Two years later, they were divorced and she came back to me and I said, I really don't want to be the person to say, I told you so, but I am here to support you because you are my friend. See, and then she told me that I was the only one out of all of her friends that said it like it was at the time, all of her other girlfriends waited until after the divorce announcement to tell her that guy was a dick. I never liked him. <laughs> yeah, see, and that's, that's again, that's, uh, I, 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 for the most part, cannot control my urge to tell somebody I told you so when I'm right. I mean, I've learned to do it nicely, I guess, but for the most part, I will always be like, Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Who called that one? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a downright bitch. Especially if it's somebody like, like, like I said, my sister and I, we don't get along. And this has gone on since early childhood. It was always more than civil rivalry with her. But she had a tendency to want to fuck everybody that I was friends with or I dated or anything like that. In fact, I go both ways. She does not. I dated this girl in high school. Just because I dated this girl, she made sure that this girl cheated on me with her. And she oh my God. Like girls. She don't even like girls. So she got out with this girl just to piss me off. Okay? Wow. So when it comes to my sister, I would always warn my friends. They'd be like, oh, I don't want to do that. You would. Like, all right. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Guess what? Let me tell you a little story, okay? And I would run down my list of fun facts about my sister, all things that are my sister. Her her disgusting hygiene habits, just everything that was wrong with her as a person. 
like everything. I would run it down. Like, and I'd be like, no, you still want to go, want to go do things with her? You want to go get with her? Hmm? Hmm? They'd be like, oh, uh, yeah. Because most of my friends were guys, and that's what yeah. I would do. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, oh, she's oh. nasty? Oh, yeah. I want a piece of that. Yeah. Yeah. Or it was the, no, you're just saying that because you're your sister. Okay. Okay. Sure. Have fun. Have fun. Have fun with that. <laughs> and when they come back two days later. And then you make sure to tell them, wear rubber. Please wear rubber. Because nobody else did. <laughs> when they would come back two days later. Oh, she's crazy. She's trying to kill me. She's so controlling. She's psychotic. <laughs> hmm. Really? I had no idea. Must be that sister rivalry that got in my way. Yeah, must have been. Yeah, I would always rub it in there. Like, that's that's really where it comes from. If the closer I am with you, the more likely I'm gonna tell you I told you so at the end of it, just because I love you and I believe firmly and hard like that that firm love, that hard love, you know. I, I want will, it hard. I will, yeah. I want it firm. I know you. <laughs> so I will straight up tell you I told you so if I love you. So if I ever tell you I told you so, Becky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, they're uh, I I don't know. It's a thin line there with you know. I I think it all goes back to that being who you are as a person, you know, staying strong in your beliefs and fuck what everybody else thinks about you, your beliefs and all that. You you, anybody you want, you as long you. as you're true to yourself. Yeah, as long as you're true to yourself, it's nobody else's fucking business. Damn Nobody's. Sure. Damn sure. And and just to remind you guys. So, like I said, been married 13 years. My husband is my best friend. I fully support him no matter what happens. And he doesn't want to be married to me anymore. I did not get angry with him. I fully support him. I urge everybody, everybody, everywhere. You should always push the people that you love to find their own happiness, no matter what it costs. Mm -hmm. Do not ever be selfish. Always support people that you care about. Yeah, there was this uh, there's this quote that I seen that uh, kind of resonated with me. It was uh, it said something like, "You can never if you and somebody don't work out, you cannot claim to be the best thing out there for them." Or whatever because every something like that is something about you can't be the best thing for everybody that you're with because everybody is different and yada 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 so if things don't work out with them it's because you were not the best thing for them right and that right there i was like oh it hit me hard because i think i'm fucking great like frosted flakes okay I was, I was, I was i'm actually i was talking to this guy and i was like yeah i'm fucking wonderful i cook i clean I'm fucking hot. I I'm great in bed. I'm hilarious. I'm this. I'm that. Like, I'm not one to normally be so cocky, but over the years, I have become more confident about myself and who I am as a person, especially with doing like sex work and things like that. Like, it has brought out a form of confidence in me mm -hmm. that I didn't have before. So, like, I know that, like, as a girlfriend or wifey material. I'm right there. I'm top tier, okay? Choice, prime, ready. I am that person. And I've learned that over the years through the people I've dated and all that, that they might have been pieces of shit. But the whole time I held on to that complex that I was the best thing for them. And I wasn't. Yes, I was the best thing in their life at that point in time. And they might end up missing me. Who knows? But I was not the best thing for them, not only because they didn't deserve me as a person, but because they needed somebody who fit their personality better. They, they and also people, somebody people change over time, so their needs change. And if yeah. you don't grow with them in the same direction, it's not going to work out in the end. And that's yeah. exactly what happened with my marriage. That's why we're still best friends. We still do a ton of stuff together. But we want different things in life now. We want different things for ourselves. Yep. 
and yep. he fully supports me. And I mean, he's amazing with Bob. I mean, he doesn't have to get along with Bob, but he he makes it a friendship. He he totally understands that I need to be happy. He's happy that I have found happiness. Yep. And that's I mean, that's like I said, you should always do what you want, be you, be true to yourself. And that's like I, I am out there, I'm dating. And it, it's really hard for a girl who does only fans and sex work and things like that to date it's very hard yeah. for somebody to do that because a lot of people have this mindset that it's wrong it's immoral it's slutty whatever it's not your fucking business exactly. it's nobody's fucking business but the conversation i always have when i start talking to somebody new and it comes out that i do have an only fans account and that i sell nudes and videos and things like that the conversation that i have with them i explain it to them <laughs> I explain to them how I view it, pros and cons, all of that. I tell them about how it's empowering, how it's boosted my confidence as a person, how it's men are going to fantasize any which way, at least this way I'm making a profit for it. I have, I have the power. I control it all. I am boss, and that makes me sexy and alive. And it, it brings meaning to, to my life that I didn't have before. And it also makes me very aware of who I am as a person. And, you know, it helps me find things that I like sexually and don't like sexually. Because I've had requests where I'm like, okay, I'll try it this once, but I'm probably never going to do this again. You know, so like I explain all that to them. And I also go into the, the tail end of it. If it's something that you're okay with or can learn to accept or want to know more about or whatever. Let me know if you don't see yourself with that type of person, a girl who does that, that's fine too. Let me know. Mm -hmm. Love. I'm very upfront about it. I'm very open with it. And I, I make sure that the people I speak with in hopes of re procuring a romantic relationship with them, I let them know that if it's not your cup of tea, that's cool. However, there's some men who on themselves, even after I tell them that to try to change me right from the get, oh, you shouldn't do oh, that. Yeah. Oh. That's degrading to you. I, I pretty much set down the ground rules when I first meet somebody. I'm like, I'm me. You're you. Either we're going to work or we're not. Because yeah. I'm not changing at all. Yeah, I mean, that mindset is, that's where I'm at too. However, I, there will, I will change things that need to be changed for somebody. I won't anymore. I used to, but I'm like, I'm 45 years old. I am almost 46. Well, I, anybody I'm, who isn't just gonna be like right on board with who I am as a person, I don't need you. I mean, I'm not in like the unhealthy thing. sense. I mean, things that are like unhealthy, like like I I sleep more often than I probably should. I I don't deal with the the medical issues that I have than I probably should. I well, don't. You, you can change you for you, right? But, I'm but not saying that change. I would change myself for somebody else. But if there's oh. If he, if a guy came into my life, like I vape, everybody knows I, I vape now. I used to be a hardcore cigarette smoker. And I know there's a lot of controversy around cigarette smoking versus vaping. If it's healthy, if it's not, if it's worse, whatever. The air is toxic and causes cancer. So everybody can get just go fuck off. But yeah, <laughs> but I, I, I went ahead. I dated a guy who was hardcore into vaping and he wanted me to quit smoking and switch to vaping or quit altogether. And I didn't like the idea of it at first, but he went ahead and he did a bunch of research on it, showed me that vaping's healthier than smoking, yada, yada, yada. He, he did the work, he showed me why, and he told me it was only because he wanted to be together longer, which obviously that was a fucking lie because I'm single. But yeah, regardless, he put in the effort to show me that it was why it was an unhealthy habit, smoking versus vaping. And I agreed with his research, his logic. And so because of him, and because I wanted to be a healthier, I made the switch to vaping. So it's things like that that I would be willing to change if it was handled like that. Now, if a guy was like, mm, you dye your hair too much. I don't like green. <laughs> okay. Wow. Guess what? <laughs> Next month, I'm going bright orange. Baby. Don't like it. Bye. Yeah, don't ever try to tell me I can't do something because I'm going to be like, yeah. is that a challenge? Yeah. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Exactly. So, I mean, I will, I will change if I need to, but not because of the guy, 
but because of the points the guy makes about the changes and if or he, because you want to change yourself yeah or because i want to change myself that's what i'm saying mm-hmm. like like if a guy wanted me to quit only fans okay okay why should i quit only fans explain it to me bring me logical points and explain let's have a reasonable it. adult debate about it yeah if let's, it's because let's he have a conversation if he says something like what the last guy said to me, which I posted this on my Twitter, something along the lines of, it's disrespectful to yourself and the man you're with. Oh, I'm sorry, what? Say that again in my good ear. It's disrespectful to the men I'm with. Tell me how. I want to hear it. And he did. He told me how. It... He told me it was disrespectful to the men I'm with because. The man I'm with should be the only one to see my body. And I'm like, okay, okay. He then went on later to explain um, women who have OnlyFans accounts and porn stars are the reason that men are so horny all the time. That's the stupidest thing. It's Does this guy have some kind of mental problem? Because it's seriously not making any sense. This is total irrational talk. You yeah. blah, 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 right out of your ass. Yeah, I it call it the dumbest dick energy. Shit. I call it little dick energy. I also call it victim shaming, um, in a sense. Yeah. It kind of goes along. It's it's something that people say like it. A woman gets raped because of what she's wearing. No. Oh yeah. No. It, it, it's the same exact thing, just fitted. It's worded so he, for girls with OnlyFans. He's insecure and projecting his insecurities on other people to make himself feel better. Yeah. Now, he did not realize that when he was saying all these things about OnlyFans girls, that I myself am an OnlyFans girl. We hadn't gotten to that point. I like to, when I when I t- bring it up, I like to see how a person thinks. So I usually bring it up by talking about how issues that my previous relationships have had. And I, I phrase it differently. I say that we had different views. And they'll usually ask me, well, what views do you guys have that were different? And I list off a bunch of things that I view a certain way. And I just say, I'll I'll do them in order. I'll say, we disagreed on this. We disagreed on this. We disagreed on this. We disagreed on this. We disagreed on girls who have OnlyFans and do sex work. We disagreed on this. We disagreed on this. Like, I give a long list. I smack the OnlyFans thing there in the middle. I don't mention that I myself have an OnlyFans. But I talk about how it, <coughs> having an OnlyFans is empowering for women how it it brings self-confidence to the women that they may or may not have had before, how it's it's just good for them and their egos, and how if a man can have an ego boost, a woman should be able to have hers no matter what it is. And mostly it's the OnlyFans type of thing. And then that's usually when the argument debates. Now, normally I tell them, oh yeah, by the way, I'm one of those girls, but this guy never got to that point. As soon as he said, women are the reason men are always so horny all the time i was like oh god oh god no i'm gonna fight you in a field somewhere like what say that again <laughs> i was like this guy has serious misinformation i mean is he living in a fucking cave underneath a fucking rock because oh my god i remember when i was 16 and i dated this boy that was 18 and he was a virgin and he was so insecure and super possessive and jealous. Um, he told me that because my knees didn't touch when I stood up straight, that my that meant my pussy was loose and I was a whore. I remember hearing that line in high school. Guys would say that to girls, or that that I remember that 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 men would say that's why that's how that was proof of woman virgin. I remember that. I oh my god! I'm like, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, ever. Yeah, because he, I, he I can agree. touch his knees together, so apparently he was like perfect. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I gotta pee. <laughs> I'm shutting my cam- my microphone off just for a second. Yeah, I uh, I agree 100. percent It's very um, it's very chauvinistic when men think like that. Um. Unfortunately, women's bodies and uh, sex appeal have been used 
for years and years and years before OnlyFans was even a thing. And I said this to this guy, men have always been horny, hence the market for such a thing as OnlyFans, okay? It was men's horniness that created <laughs> created the need for OnlyFans, that created the market for it to make it even a thing if men were horny. Just because women hop on the train does not make them disgusting or shameful or disrespectful. <laughs> so, okay. So, seriously, though, rape has been around since Jesus' time. I am not shitting you. Rape is mentioned in the Bible. Women walked around fully robed just like the men. You can't fucking tell me that has anything to do with anything. Men are horny. Women are horny. Women are more mature about it. They know, like, yeah, they, I, they act better about it. I mean, some Most women. women it's vulgar and disgusting assholes. Of some course, women, there are women that are like that too. I'm, yeah, some women and some men. Because mm -hmm. there are men out there who are mature about it. Like, I, I, I started talking. <coughs> I started talking to another guy shortly after that, and he knows that I do the OnlyFans stuff. He's very supportive of it so far. I mean, we haven't gone out on a date or anything. We've only been talking a couple couple weeks, but he's very open about it. He's very supportive about it. He he seems to be very in, not invested, but he very open and into it. So there are some guys out there who who do have that mindset, and a lot of the girls I work with who do the cam work, they're, they're married. I mean, they have husbands who, I mean, they sometimes star on it. They sometimes give pointers. They'll take photos of the girls. The, I mean, they, they help with it. So there are men out there who are supportive and open to it and uh, are fine with it. And those men are more secure in their masculinity and their relationship and all that. And that's, that's, that's really what it comes down to is communication and security in your relationship. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you bring that up because, um, so I'm not into the, the same, uh, sex work as you are or anything like that. Um, I don't, I don't know if a lot of people know this, like, I'm just like, Becky needs to be cause she's so fucking hot. Oh, shush, shush, shush. But no, I am in adult chat rooms and I'm actually, um, like, admin in a couple of them but you know i'm i'm out there and i'm talking to people and then i have like private conversations with people here and there and for the most part i don't talk sex anything in my dms that is exclusively for exhibitionism in the chat room in front of everybody else um but so but like the the way that I talk to people is extremely erotic, you know. Oh yeah, I, I, know. I know. I do have, I do have a couple of private conversations with people. Like these people are my friends. Um, we do have actual relationships. It, they're online only, but the DMs can get a little heated sometimes too. Oh yeah, and I know. First and okay. then I will show them pictures or videos or something that I wouldn't share to the group for everybody to see. It's just for them, you know, just things like that. But so my husband and I have been split up for a year. And after that, like I would ask him to take pictures of me so I could get enough of the picture in the picture, you know? Oh and yeah. He would take pictures for me. And he, so he totally knows what I'm doing. Bob totally knows what I'm doing. Like he's, he, like I'm, I'm sitting here playing on my phone, talking shit in a DM with a guy, and I get, and I'm snuggled up in his armpit, you know, and he can see my phone. He's reading it right as it goes, and I'm like, oh my god, this just happened, <laughs> you know? Oh my god, yeah. I can't believe you said that. How do I respond, you know? And he's fine with it. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's what it comes down to. I mean, that's the number one rule. I mean, I, I go over with guys is ultimately you would know everything that's going on you would have access to it if you want it if you didn't believe me or whatever like it's wrong that you don't trust me but 
I would show you if you had questions, you know, I yeah. wouldn't ever let you wonder about it. Um, well, yeah, that's, that's my biggest point is I don't keep secrets. There, there is no reason for keeping secrets. If I'm not with somebody who's as open-minded as I am, I don't want to be with them. You know? Right. And, and that's something I think that, you know, even Betty White would have gotten behind. I think Betty White would have understood fully and supported him. That's again another reason why we love her because and her 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 mindset was be who you are, fuck everybody else and the judgment, which is what our show is all about. And our show is actually over. <laughs> because yes. we have talked I have to go to bed people. Time. I have a job. <laughs> yes, yeah, she's a working lady. I have a job and that is a four letter word. <laughs> So yeah, why OBB? That's, that's part of her her ritual you know she got to go get some and we all know that so we we got to wrap up so she can go get it in before bedtime <laughs> twice, at least twice i gotta wake up early tomorrow oh my god i'm gonna be so busy this month i do not i actually slept no stop it before you get us banned stop what banned. I, I I heard a request. I do special <laughs> requests sometimes. <laughs> it would be perfect for cam work. Come on. Make oh, my dream come true. Oh, yes. Yes. Give it to me. Where's my oh, camera? My shush, shush. Shush. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys and girls. We hope you enjoyed this episode today. And again, you know, respect Betty White's memory. Honor her memory in the truest form. And just be who you are. Okay. absolutely this show was all about i mean not just betty but respect yourself make yourself happy do not ever try to please anybody else i mean be a respectful person don't you yeah. don't have to go out of your way to be obnoxious or disrespectful you should always be a respectful person but don't ever jeopardize your own happiness to please other people it's it is ethically wrong and it's ethically wrong for anybody to require that from you yeah and and betty white did embody that as a person and maybe that's why she lived till 99 years old till she was 99 years old i feel like i phrased that terribly but she lived a long life I and, and, and she said that was her life mantra basically i mean was to just be her and and we respect the ever loving fuck out of her we will miss her and just honor her memory and be her be be like and, her be you and the whole point of this entire show since the very beginning is be a hope happiness over everything always 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 100 percent you for you make yourself happy find your happiness do yep. whatever you need to to find your own happiness that's whether, what being whole means yep whether whether it's sucking a dick or taking nude pictures and posting them on OnlyFans. Do it. Or <laughs> <laughs> Please. 